and welcome to Face Off. My name's Steve Clark and my co-commentator this evening is Tony Hunter. It's the last uh, edition of the series and this week the Pirates are up against the Edinburgh Capitals. Uh, it's uh, been a, uh, well, up and down uh, playoff campaign, Tony. Um, and Pirates can't make it to Hull, it seems. They've gone for the uh, decision, the ruling. Fastest goal between the two teams. That means five were quicker than us. Poor decision, really, Tony. Well, yeah, it is. I mean, it's not an IIHF uh, ice hockey, International Ice Hockey Federation ruling, is it? It's something that we've uh, dreamed up ourselves, as usual, you know. So, uh, But then again, you know, no excuses. Pirates knew what they were coming into. You know, everyone thought they'd hit form just right just after Christmas, you know, coming into the playoffs. Even convinced their coach, Troy Walkington, you know, that they were going to do something. And uh, But it hasn't come off, and that's how playoff hockey goes. If you're not up for it, you know, whoever wants it wins it. Simple as that. That's right. The Pirates have got to be better next year. That's all there is to it. Oh, I'm sure, you know, we'll have a good competitive team coming out of here. And, uh, you know, I think they've, they've smelt success this season. They've won the Christmas Cup. And, uh, you know, and like, like I say, they've, they've been bombed out the playoffs. Another word for it. So, uh, but, yeah, I'm sure they'll come better prepared next season. Looking at tonight's game against Edmund, I think they're going to tackle it. Um, well, what have they got to play for? You know, I just hope, you know, the, the lads are professional enough, but both teams to come out and give a good account of themselves and play for the sweater, you know, play for the colours. OK, so looking at the uh, lineups then, going to the Peterborough Pirates, uh, pretty much a uh, standard format, nobody injured. Uh, star players, of course, we've got uh, Kevin King making his last performance for the Pirates tonight. Uh, well, home game anyway. Uh, Mark Ellis has been on form lately. And uh, <clears throat> Randy Smith, of course, top scorer. We're looking at uh, David Clark as the uh, focus man tonight. And uh, what about David? He's had a great few weeks since coming back from the World Championship, uh, Tony. He's had a phenomenal season. I mean, he's gone from a, you know, if you don't mind expression, a boy to a man, you know, this season. And uh, he's stepped up. Uh, grabbed the opportunity by the horns and uh, he's a key player for the Pirates now and I'm sure you know that other clubs are out there watching him you know hopefully there's uh, Super League teams watching his progress over next year and I think he's got a big big future uh, in ice hockey okay moving on to moving on to the Capitals uh, short of a few guys tonight uh, Scott Neal uh, is uh, not icing uh, Robert Jack the uh, backup netminder he's not with us Doug Marsden their top scorer uh, he's uh, injured, separated his shoulder a few weeks back, uh, and Scott Plews is not playing. But the man we've got, who is playing, we're going to focus, is Dean Edmiston. He used to play for the Pirates, and uh, he was one of the Wembley crew. That's right. You know, Dean had a good couple of seasons here under uh, the, the Rocky Saganuck era, and he did, a, for, for a British player, I thought, at the time, I thought he was outstanding. He came here from Medway and did a great, great job for us. And, uh, you know, I always think back to when we made it, you know, you, he's one of the first names I always think, you know, that helped us get there, you know. Uh, he had a great time here, yeah. OK, so that's that. Bit of a Pirates versus Edinburgh Capitals, the last game of the uh, face-off campaign. We'll see you soon. Well, the game's underway now. Bit of a Pirates versus Edinburgh Capitals. Jason Kelly, the man who's uh, acting captain for the evening, gets the puck forward. It's Tony Malm now for the Capitals. Comes back to Dunbar, who flashes one in, but... Uh, well, it's a goal there for the Capitals. Quick goal. Uh, Dan Dennis couldn't get to that one, Tony. And uh, disappointing start for the Pirates. Well, I was just going to just going to say to you there right off the bat that I quite like this line of Mom uh, and, and the other t uh, Cockwo, is it? I've, I've been well French impressed. French Canadian. Dunbar, yeah, and Mom and Abel. I've been well impressed with them all season. And uh, good fight in the line, and they've gone straight down. And here you see absolute no intensity in front of goal whatsoever. As you see, you know, the shot comes in. I mean, they get three bites of the cherries, don't they? Look, come, no one picking up the weak side winger. Randy's trying to get everyone organised. He's in front of the slot. Shot comes across to the slot. And there you are, Mum. Open net. Couldn't miss, could he? Roger Hunt now. The big guy. The uh, coach. One of the coaches for the Capitals. Ted Russell pins his man on the boards. It comes out to David Clark. David Clark still neatly across to Nathan Rempel. Nathan nonchalantly at the left-hand side leaves it for Ted Russell. Ted Russell looking for space. He circles around the back of the goal. Through to Randy Smith. Randy Smith with a chance now. Can't quite find a way past Finney this time. Plenty of time there. So 
and neither side will be contesting the finals weekend in the hull. It's a long, long way, of course, for Edinburgh to come down to Peterborough. 350 mile bus trip and Pirates are going to do it tomorrow and well it's Keller now Keller Keller fires win it's a goal for the Pirates Pirates equalise after 4 minutes and 15 seconds and uh, Pirates on track now Tony yeah it was a great effort from Bill Keller been impressed with him in the last few weeks and uh, you know it's a pity you haven't done uh, a little bit better in the playoffs because he is one player that I have felt has uh, done well in the playoff uh, campaign you know and uh, that was a good finish. So we've got a uh, action replay coming up, I believe. As you can see on the slow motion, you know, Kelleher work, works well here. Picks the puck up. We've got John Oddie in support. But here you see Bill Kelleher using both sides of his stick well here. Gets control of it. Doesn't have the best of angles. Knows he's got to really go across the face of the goal to get anything out of this. And as you can see, he digs the goaltender and goes between his legs. So Lidyard clears it up the board, comes through to David Clark. Pirates now on the loose. It's David Clark up the right hand side. He's got a big man to get by and he does so. It comes through, but it's not quite, not quite neatly passed. David Clark again for the Pirates. She gets one in, fires one in just to the right of the goal. And now it's Beveridge. Beveridge leaves it for Clark. Clark. Clark has another goal. He's in the back of the net. Another goal for David Clark. Well, he gets better and better, don't he, Tony? Yeah, he does, you know. You could see that was a goal all the way, couldn't you? He got two bites of the cherry, but uh, the second attempt, I mean, it was pinpoint accuracy and uh, had great power behind it. Very hard for a goaltender. Great goal from young David Clark. So David Clark gets his... First goal of the evening, and here's action replay. Yeah, here you see him. He loses his marker here, goes wide. He's got a lot to shoot at, but look at him. Picks his spot beautifully. There it is, back of the net. It's Pickles now for the Pirates, chasing back, but Lidyard's the man who collects it this time. Clears it deep and forward, picked up by Tony Clark. David Clark, sorry. David Clark. Leaves it for Randy Smith. Randy Smith homes in on the goal. He's round the back of the net now. Comes around the front, tries to switch it round. But, well, a good chance there for Lidyard, but he couldn't quite put it away. Randy Smith there. And it's uh, intercepted by Jason Kelly. Pushes it all the way forward to Dan Dennis. Abel again. Big defenceman. We could do with a few big guys. We've been saying this for a week or two. A bit of a steadying influence at the back, Tony. What do you reckon next year? Yeah, I definitely think that's going to be the. That would be my my first job if I was Troy Walkington. Get my get my, my blue line sorted out. And because uh, I, you know, I think in a nutshell, and I think a lot of people agree with me, that's cost us the playoffs this year. We've had, we've lacked height and we've lacked weight at the back, you know. And uh, you just got to look at Slough, what they did when they came into this uh, arena a couple of weeks ago, and uh, that first period they just tore us to bits. So what would you say? A couple of big guys? Yeah, they need and, some big uh, Maybe a yeah, big forward who can uh, step back if need be. Well, offensively, you know, you look at the stats and we're okay. We score goals, you know, but at the back, we really need to shore it up. And uh, we need a couple of bangers at the back there, I think. Well, Randy Smith with the uh, face-off for the Pirates now. 2.45 left on the clock. Pirates leading by two goals to one in this final playoff encounter, home encounter for the Pirates, and Randy Smith breaks free. Well, uh, very nearly uh, put away there by Nathan Remble, but the, the net's been moved off its moorings by Roger Hunt in a, a fairly obvious way there, Tony. Uh, he pushed that clean off the moorings, and I think he could get a delaying penalty for that. That's right. Uh, that's right. Uh, referee Myers just called, made the call, delaying the game. For Roger Hunt and he was right on the spot and uh, really he's got no argument there has he? That was definitely pushed off the moorings. Uh, Finney was complaining but I mean Hunt definitely pushed it off. Uh, so it's Kelleher now the man on the uh, on the case of the Pirates it comes out. Pirates a little lackluster it has to be said but I suppose nothing to play for we wouldn't really have expected too much else but there's a good crowd here they've paid to come to get in 
and uh, they'd like to see the Pirates sign off on a high note. Uh, Callagher behind the Pirates, uh, behind the Capitals goal. Callagher still. Callagher to Jameson. Jameson gets a chance. There's just too many red shirts there in front of the crease. And they clear it all the way back down to Dan Dennis. Jason Porter picks it up behind his own goal. Callagher now. Callagher moves forward. Has it to John Oddy. Comes across. It's intercepted there by Alan Hoff. Alan Hoff gets it round uh, Oddy this time. And has a fire in. It's a goal. Goal number two for the Capitals. That was Alan Hoff. And their Capitals now back on even terms. And that's Pirates only really got themselves to blame there. There's just not enough uh, oomph in their game tonight, Tony. That's right. There's no intensity, no nothing. The heads are down. And this is what happens. You know, you've got to be up for the game. You're playing for the sweater. And here we see, you know, the no intensity whatsoever along the boards. And Edinburgh get possession. They've got lots and lots of room. Nobody making much effort there. I mean, Krug is, uh, number seven Krug there. Could have, could have played the man there. Ties him up. But look at the shot coming in from Hoff. And... Uh, Really, it's down to uh, Dan Dennis. Remble back to uh, Ted Russell. Ted Russell to Daniel Farron. Danny Farron leaves it for Ted Russell. Ted Russell leaves it for Remple. Remple puts it forward. Randy Smith has a go, but can't quite get to it. He loses his stick in the process. As Laurie Dunbar now moves forward for the Capitals. Jeff Daniels across to... Well... Well, they've just given a goal. Just given a goal. There, and Myers like. nodding his head and he's giving it... Well, it looks like the Capitals go 3-2 hop. Well, that's what the goal judge is for. Meyer wasn't sure. He's saying, I don't know. You make the call. And, and uh, uh, yes, the goal the judge is, uh, has given a goal. So, uh, referee Meyer, Glenn Meyer, is uh, giving the goal. So, 11-17 left on the clock. Capitals make it 3-2. And, uh, well, not exactly what the Pirates wanted. Well, as you can see, you know, the, the uh, Edinburgh Capitals, they, they force the zone, they, they, they penetrate. They, they, as you see, 91's just waiting for the guy to go to the net. There's a lot of traffic in front of the net now, and puck goes wide to the weak side winger. He goes for the shot, and again, it goes under Dan Dennis. He manages to scoop it back out, but by that time, it's already crossed the line. Well, back to the action then, and uh, Edinburgh Capitals now 3-2 up. And it's uh, an so offside call there face off and uh, it has to be said the Pirates are a little complacent this evening that's right it's almost like an exhibition game isn't it you know where you're playing non-contact and uh, well not sorry not exhibition game but like a fun game you know and uh, where you've got all your superstars out there and nobody takes the hits but uh, I just hope you know we don't end up having a you score we score situation well, a long-range shot there from Jason Crew. Absolute beauty from outside the blue line. You don't see many of those, Tony. And Pirates equalise. Just looking back, the uh, Capitals' goal was Tony Palmu who got that one. He was assisted by Laurie Dunbar and Jeff Daniels. But uh, Pirates come back quickly, and with 10 to 52 left on the clock, they uh, make it three apiece. Well, here you see on the draw, we win Kelleher wins the draw. Crew picks up the loose puck, takes it wide to the open space, gets to the blue line and says, well, I'm going to have a go. You know, he's got the, the, the whole uh, slot area there, just winds up, tees it up, lets it go and hopes for the best. And it went top shelf on John Finney. And that's where we should have been going all game, top shelf. It's across the ice and leaves Jeff Daniels to go back for it. Jeff Daniels still got the puck now. 15 seconds left on this penalty. It's David Clark now. David Clark fires one in. Finney gets to it. David Clark gets a second go at it. Can't get it by Finney this time. Daniels now moving up the left-hand side. Matt Beveridge off the boards. Comes forward to Jameson. Ted Russell. Ted Russell fires one in. The angle's uh, not too good for him. Comes back to Ted Russell. Has another shot just to the side of the post. Chris Jameson now behind the goal comes forward, David Clark pops one in, number two for David Clark, the local boy, second of the evening, David Clark, Pirates go 4-3 off. Well, you know, like you say, David Clark, he's, it's hit really his, his, his game in here tonight, the imports, you know, you've got Russell, Smith and all them guys trying to put the puck away, the biscuit in the basket, 
and it's all down to David Clark. He's the only one that seems to get anything through uh, John Finney. As you can see here, played perfectly. He sits himself into the slot there, prime scoring area. Puck comes straight across, and he fires it home. Ted Russell collects the puck, leaving it all with the puck, putting it forward. Trying a long, long shot through there to uh, Randy Smith. Ted Russell still. Ted Russell. Ted Russell across to Randy Smith. Randy Smith. Well, that was that look for everything a goal, but the uh, goal just didn't see it that way, and neither did the referee. Well, it almost certainly looked to be a goal, and uh, Randy Smith is dumbfounded. It has to be said. Ted Russell forward to. Nathan Rempel, Nathan Rempel to Randy Smith, Randy Smith with the puck, goes in, Dan Den uh, John Finney gets to it, Rempel, back to uh, Grimstead, Randy Smith has another go just in front of the goal, but can't make it number five just yet. Well that's right, again we go into the pads of John Finney, you know, still again we'd like to see him going up top and I'm sure we'd pull up a goal or two if we went upstairs on him. Oh, uh, wait for the puck to go down. 12 minutes and 12 seconds left on the clock. His puck is dropped. And it's picked up there by Keller. Pushes across the ice to Chris Jameson who chases forward and into the Edinburgh zone. Jameson gets to it, but so do the Capitals and the Capitals clear it. Jason Porter left to chase back into his own end to pick it up. Here comes through now. That's number 39, Mike Galati. Mike Galati breaks through and Capitals equalise. And that looked like a, Je a Jeff Daniels goal there. And uh, it's a well-taken goal, Steve. You know, uh, Mike Galati did a lot of good work in the Pirate zone. And uh, puck come wide on the weak side. And Galati roofed it straight past uh, Dan Dennis. It was a great effort. Uh, really, we should have done better in front of the net. Here we see the slow-mo here. This is Mike Galati with the puck. The puck's gone to the weak side there. And there you see the puck goes up to the roof. Uh, uh, up just over the body of uh, Dan Dennis up top. Oh, David Clark again across Ted Russell now for the Pirates. Ted Russell moves in. David Clark there just in front of the goal and it's Pirates on the move. Number 39 Mike Galati and it, well a good effort there by Dan Dennis to get into that one and that could easily have been number five for the Capitals. So the action's still down there in the Pirates zone. Alan Hoff pokes one in but it's well wide. Callahan now for the Pirates. Jason Porter tries to get things sorted, but Jeff Daniels now for the Capitals. Jack Daniels gets in front of the goal. Hay has a chance. And he fires one in. It's a goal from Hay there. Capitals take the lead. Eight minutes and 12 seconds left on the clock. And that's young Ross Hay there, 18-year-old forward of British origin. That's right. It was a great, great effort from one of their kids, one of the British kids. And, you know, you've got to take your hat off to them. Great effort. He was in the prime scoring area, that's the place to be, nobody on him, he's in the slot area, and why not have a shot at goal, and there it is, there it is and he scored. As you see, the puck, there's a big, big scramble, no, no real uh, organisation at the back there, there's the puck on Hay stick. look at him, pick your spot kid and let it go, there it is. Pirates, it's six minutes and four seconds left to... Uh, Get back into this game and then of course two goals really required by the Pirates in order to uh, to win this clash and uh, at 4-5 and it's another goal for the Capitals it dropped back there in it bobbled over the line Dan Dennis didn't quite get to it and uh, it's now six goals to the uh, Capitals and only four to the Pirates and it's it's pretty disappointing, Tony. Well, the puck was bouncing. That's, you know, you've got to give it to Dan Dennis there. The puck was bouncing. Wasn't really his job to... Uh, uh, he wasn't expecting it to come in on him, to be honest. It shouldn't have come that far. Puck should have been cleared. And uh, as we'll see on the slow motion, you know, Smitty's in there for the draw. With Cocco. And uh, really, all Cocco has to do is win, win the draw and get the puck into the corner and, uh, to kill this clock. There we see Randy wins the draw. No, he doesn't. Coco wins the draw, sorry, and uh, again, Young Hay holds up his, his, uh, his check, Jason Porter, which releases Coco, who just really takes a, a wild swing at it, and the puck is bouncing, 
and to be honest Dan Dellis you could say he's gone down a little bit too early but he really shouldn't have been left to down the score with 156 left on the clock the last two minutes of the game eight goals to the Capitals and four to the Pirates so comes down Kelleher comes out to Krug Krug for the Pirates puts one in the goal goes in a bit of a consolation there for the Pirates it looks like Bill Keller is the man who will get his name on that one that's right you know the shot come from the point from Krug it was low and hard and uh, you know not quite on target and Keller has saying to himself get your, get your stick on it see what happens and uh, well the luck went for him and it went in and uh, he thoroughly deserves a goal tonight because I thought he, you know first half of the game Bill Keller was having a very good game so Pirates pull one back here we see Jason Krug, you know, gets gets control of the puck first, lets the quick one go, look at Keller, tips it in, good, good goal, straight through the legs of uh, Philly. Kevin King, well, he's been trying to get a goal this evening, every which way, but it doesn't look like uh, it is to be in Kevin's final game for the Pirates at home. Just Sad way to go out, I suppose, uh, losing by five goals to eight, uh, albeit nothing too much to play for. Pickles now with the puck for the Pirates, closing seconds of the game. Comes through to Beveridge, one second left, and, uh, and that's that. They've uh, blown the hooter, and that's it. The score at the end of the game, Peterborough Pirates five. Edinburgh Capitals 8. So the end of uh, the season as far as Planet Ice is concerned. Peterborough Pirates lose their final game by 8 goals to 5 against the Edinburgh Capitals. And it was a disappointing performance really, Tony. Well it was, you know, but then it was half expected, wasn't it? You know, it's a, it's a job for the guys, you know, they've had the stuff been knocked out of them this week by being told that, you know, they, they're out of the playoffs by a stupid decision, you know, whoever scored the fastest goal, and, you know, now that's, well, that's history now, you know, but, but they've had a good, all in all, they've had a good season, they've had some silverware, you know, there's been some more good things, obviously, than bad things, that I suppose the playoffs have thrown everything out the window, really, but, uh, you know, but, you know, look, one good thing is the kids are coming through, you know, David Clark, for me, has been exceptional this year, Dan Dennis has had a great season, and, you know, up until, well, the, the, the playoffs, I thought Chris Jameson did an excellent job for us, you know, and that's what it, that's what it takes, you know, guys that bump and grind, but really, uh, Troy Walkinson needs to get some big guys in, some, uh, some, some height and some weight, some bangers for next season. So, a good basis for the Pirates to work on for next year, successful. Uh, Pirates winning the Christmas Cup, um, but uh, it was not to be playoff-wise, and uh, we've gone out of that competition. It's the end of the season as far as Planet Ice is concerned, going down by five goals to eight tonight, uh, and that was the season. So after the break, we'll be back talking to Troy Walkington and David Clark. Obviously a disappointing performance tonight, Troy. Uh, I guess the guys find it difficult to be positive uh, after going out of the playoffs. Uh, how did you see things? Well, I just saw a lack of commitment from certain guys. I, I think that if you can't get yourself uh, um, up to playing just for the love of the game, then you shouldn't expect to be paid at the end of the week either. That's fair enough. Uh, obviously, it's a disappointing game, but you've had a better season than last year. Uh, what sort of plans have you got for next year that you can let us in on at the moment? Well, I think right now, after, the, after watching the game that I just saw, um, I would anticipate that it's not a good idea to ask me about which players are coming back or the evaluation of players right now because uh, a, a lot of that I think comes down to character and heart and, and right now we, we showed neither this evening. Okay David, well done tonight, two goals. Uh, you've come on leaps and bounds since you come back from the World Championships. What do you put that down to? I don't know, it's just really uh, confidence really like, you know, the boys show more confidence in me, the boys show more confidence in me, you know. Just really, just really picking things up from where I left off when I got back from Lithuania. The extra ice time's obviously benefited you, and you're coming, you're turning into a really good player. Uh, how do you see your career going over the next couple of years? So no, really, I'll just uh, keep improving as much as I can, and then hopefully, you never know, get into the Super League and progress through there. Disappointing game tonight, Kevin, but uh, looking back at things overall, you've had a great career at Peterborough. How much are you going to miss playing uh, in front of the Pirates uh, fans on a Sunday night? It's going to be very strange not to come here on, on a Sunday night and play. It's going to be very strange, but I'm looking forward to my, my, my new career in coaching. 
So uh, what sort of plans exactly have you got for the next season and so forth? I will be coaching at least one team in youth development next year. Um, and I'll be concentrating that much more. I am senior coach of youth development at the moment, but I haven't done anywhere near what I should have done this year due to work commitments and uh, all the midweek games we have the Christmas Cup and uh, the weekend games. So next year I, I'm, I'm looking forward to youth development. Next season, looking ahead, and obviously it's difficult to be positive just at the moment, but uh, we've, we should have a good chance at, at uh, getting the uh, honours next year. I, again, I, I think it's a little bit too early to tell. I, I know that um, I've wanted to make a few changes, and, and uh, this has really put an exclamation mark on that, that I, I know where our deficiencies are, and I, I tell you, there, there's going to be some surprises, and it, it, it shouldn't be a case of... Uh, um, you know, supporters being surprised that this guy or that guy has has uh, has left the team because it's it's not a surprise by watching the game this evening. And hello, this is Simon Potter with the last British National League results roundup of this season. We'll start with last Saturday's disappointing results. In Pirates Group, Slough Jets made it five wins out of five as they beat Fife Flyers 4-1. In the other group, two penalty shootouts. Basingstoke Bison made it five wins from five as they beat the reigning champions, Guildford Flames, in a penalty shootout. And overtime couldn't separate Telford Tigers and Kingston Hawks either. That too went to penalty shots with Kingston coming out on top. The following day, Sunday, Pirates got their due revenge at Edinburgh Capitals, while Slough Jets needed an overtime period to win at Fife Flyers, both sides missing a number of key players ahead of the finals weekend, but Slough coming out on top in the extra period. In the other group, Kingston Hawks beat Telford Tigers at 8-6 in the battle of the financially stricken clubs, and on Monday, Guildford Flames made light work of bait beating Basingstoke Bison 5-2. So how does that leave the tables? Well, Slough and Fife go through from Group A, and in the other group it's uh, Guildford Flames who go through as group winners, and Basingstoke Bison, the only one of the four teams in the semi-finals not to have won some silverware, who go through as second-placed teams. So, what do I reckon is going to happen in the semi-finals? Slough Jets against Basingstoke Bison will be a close one. I have a sneaking suspicion it will go into overtime and Slough will just edge it. While in the later game on semi-finals day, it's Guildford Flames against Five Flyers. My money is on Guildford Flames for that one. I reckon somewhere in the region of 6-2. Just prove me wrong now. Sunday, of course, is the final. I reckon Slough against Guildford then. Who's going to win it? I'm not prepared to say. So, from myself, Simon Potter, and Steve Clark, and Tony Hunter, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you back next season on Face Off.